Coney Island, a drab three-mile protrusion in Brooklyn's core, has long been a diamond in the rough. Coney Island was a playground for the rich and famous who came to watch the horse races in nearby Sheepshead Bay and enjoy the delights of the oceanfront hotels. However, their incoming ferries and carriages were greeted by prostitutes and gamblers. From its earliest days as a seaside resort in the 1840s, it was known as Sodom by the Sea. Coney Island in Brooklyn, New York, near the southwest corner, was one of the most well-liked holiday destinations in the country at the turn of the 20th century, with dozens of hotels and attractions spread out around the island. Coney Island, however, was in a state of economic collapse from 1945 until recently, despite being prosperous through the first part of the 20th century, with deteriorating infrastructure, abandoned buildings, and insufficient services for the neighborhood. When the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor on December the 7th, 1941, the United States entered into World War II. As a result, Coney Island's most well-liked attraction and parks saw a huge increase in visitors during the summer of 1942. The Shrine Church of Our Lady of Solace continued to welcome thousands of immigrants, largely refugees who had managed to flee the European War, as it had done from the beginning. The church served as Coney Island's focal point, a hub for planning numerous food drives, fuel restrictions, scrap metal and rubber collecting drives, and a foreign assistance hub for refugees, just like it did during the Depression. Buildings in Luna Park were severely damaged by a succession of fires in the early and middle 1940s. Finally, in 1949, it shut its doors to make way for a parking lot, which was then followed by a sizable project for subsidized housing. A theme park called Luna Park was located in Brooklyn's Coney Island. The park was situated on a plot of land that was bordered to the south by Surf Avenue, the east by West 8th Street, the north by Neptune Avenue, and the west by West 12th Street. Opening in 1903, Luna Park ran until 1944. Luna Park opened on May the 16th, 1903, and was very successful up to Dundee's passing in 1907. The park was thereafter run alone by Thompson until his contract was terminated in 1912. From 1911 through 1939, the park was owned by the Luna Amusement Company. However, during the Great Depression, creditors twice foreclosed on Luna Park. The park's proprietors continuously added additional attractions and performances throughout the years before leasing the park to a syndicate in 1940 and keeping it open during World War II. The park's eastern half closed in September 1944, while the western half was completely destroyed by fire in August 1944 and never reopened. The majority of the site remained closed for several years after 1944, despite the fact that certain rides on Surf Avenue continued to run. The entire area was renovated as the Luna Park houses between 1958 and 1962. Despite the fact that Luna Park opened in the area in 2010, it has no link to the park from 1903. By the 1940s, all of the hotels had been demolished with the exception of one. At the western end of the entertainment park, the Half Moon Hotel was the only remaining building. When Abe Kid Twist Relis, a Murder Inc. informant, managed to fall to his death while in detention from an upper story before he could testify, it gained more prominence. The Half Moon was intended to rival the opulent Atlantic City at the time and draw elite audiences to Coney Island rather than merely hordes of working-class day-trippers when it opened in 1927. That, however, didn't precisely take place. The hotel was on the verge of going out of business in the 1930s, but it managed to turn a profit by holding banquets and congresses. Abe, Kid Twist Rellas, later moved in. After being accused of murder in 1940, Relis, a mobster with Murder, Inc., became an informant. He was under police protection at the Half Moon, surrounded by six officers, and was constantly being observed when he testified in several trials. Abe Relis, before settling down at the Half Moon, he appeared to be aware of what was in store for him. Relis was discovered dead, flat on his back on the roof of the hotel kitchen, well below the sixth floor window, in the early hours of November 12, 1941. He seems to have died while attempting to flee when bed linens were put together to form a rope. Or was he pushed? Mob leader Lucky Luciano said that cops received $50,000 to throw Relis out the window in the 1960s. Nobody is certain, and the Half Moon, which was demolished in the 1990s, 
to make room for an assisted living facility took its mysteries with it when it was destroyed. It was enjoyable to take public transit to get to Coney Island. On the weekends, the drab, chocolate-colored BMT subway trains that headed to the seashore were turned into fun-filled rides, complete with harmonica solos, vocal harmonies, and shrieking children running up and down the aisles. The Coney Island trolley line will switch to open-air carriages after Decoration Day, which would have open railings in place of panels and windows on their sides. The ecstatic motorcyclists were met by chilly coastal breezes, which were a close second to air conditioning. But Coney Island was where you could find the truly amazing rides. Luna Park had attractions including the Ferris wheel, the Shoot the Shoot water coaster, the Dodgem vehicles that slammed into one another while being powered by electric trolley poles that sizzled with blue sparks and crackled with each impact. For the fearless, Luna Park offered the Cyclone and Thunderbolt roller coasters as well as the Loop the Loop, which had vehicles that repeatedly flipped riders in the air. Steeplechase Park had attractions including the Revolving Barrel, the Earthquake Stairs, and the Iron Horse Races, which pulled their charges around the park's circular perimeter and gave the place its name. A famous attraction of the early 1940s World's Fair, the 250-foot parachute jump was reconstructed in 1941 on the Steeplechase Pier and has since dominated the Coney skyline. The 25-story mushroom-shaped tower let its cable-guided chairs fall in a brief simulation of freefall before the passengers' parachutes opened and dumped them to the ground with a jarring shock. When the chute of a friendly out-of-town couple clogged as they were falling, it made national headlines. Before the rescuers could find out how to bring them down, they were forced to wait there patiently for the entire night. Coney Island became immensely popular as a wartime amusement for both Allied troops and sailors. Ile de Coney was ranked among the top three New York sites by French military who were visiting. People munched on their favorite hot dogs as the boardwalk lights, which were painted black on the sides facing the ocean, sat in the pitch black darkness looking out at the Atlantic. Just after the war, Coney Island reached its peak as a tourist destination. On July 3, 1947, 2.6 million people were reportedly at the beach, setting a record, albeit these official numbers were greatly overstated. Autos were hard to come by, and the subways were also transporting a record amount of passengers. However, the suburbs soon began to proliferate thanks to the GI Bill's low mortgage rates and President Eisenhower's road-building initiatives made recreational areas accessible throughout the area. Free admission to one of Coney Island's top sideshows. In the 1940s and 1950s, the Coney Island's Magistrates Court on West 8th Street opened for business each summer to deal with a constant stream of miscreants who broke the rules or ordinances of the amusement parks. Magistrate Charles E. Ramsgate offered to preside every year since he enjoyed the job. The court calendar served as a miniature representation of Coney Island throughout the summer. The droning voice of the court clerk summoned a stream of beach brawlers, gymnasts, peddlers, ball players, vagrants, undressers, and peeping toms before the judge, who administered justice with a sense of fun. This is Coney Island in New York in the 1940s. Let me know your thought and opinions on the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. We will see you on the next video.